So now that we have defined what is the metric cosine similarity, and from there we have defined what is a neighborhood for each movie, we can finally define the predictor based on that information called the neighborhood predictor. So the neighborhood predictor would be denoted as r hat ui, but we have already used that symbol to represent the baseline predictor. Let's add a soup n. This n does not mean the number of uh, users or movies is a shorthand for neighborhood. Okay, so we want to find out what is r hat sub ui soup n. This is basically the original baseline predictor. Now plus what we learn from these neighbors. We learn from these neighbors that if a neighbor movie J in the shifted rating R two D, okay, again R two D is just R minus R hat. In this shifted space, depending on whether um, uh, J is positively correlated with movie I or negative correlated with movie I. It's going to give us some information. So we want to add up those information, summing across all the movies J indexed by J in the set L sub I. So we have to weight each such rating by a neighbor movie J in some way. What should the weight be? One choice is just let weight be the cosine coefficient itself, dij. Now, this may not be the best choice. We just don't have time to go into optimizing this particular choice of the weight. So let's say it's just dij. So if dij is positive, we're adding to the prediction. If it's negative, we're subtracting from that. And then we have to normalize somehow. Right, because we might be adding a lot of these movies in the neighborhood. So we have to divide that by the magnitude of the weights. The weights can be it's just dij absolute, summing over j in the neighborhood for movie i, ri. Now, why do we put absolute sign here but not here? Well, because in normalization, if you don't put absolute value, the positive and negative dijs will cancel each other. So that's not the intention to count their size. But in the numerator, if we add the absolute value, then we get confused whether j is very similar to i or very dissimilar to i. That's why when we calculate the influence by neighborhood movies j, we use the actual dij, which could be positive or negative. But when we normalize by their size, we have to use the absolute value of dij's. Now you can make it even simpler by just making the weights one. You simply just count, uh, add up the uh, r two d's, and divide by the size of the neighborhood. That's it. Uh, that turns out not to be performing very well. So we use a slightly more uh, involved weights here. All right. So this is what we have been looking for in the last what, 80 minutes. This is the neighborhood predictor that will enable you to get quite far ahead in the Netflix price competition. It composed of two parts. One part is the baseline predictor. Again, how do we get to the baseline predictor? Very simple, by solving the least square problems involving these BUs and BIs. Because the baseline predictor, our head, is just the lazy average predictor plus BU plus BI for each UI pair. Okay, so solve least square based on the ground truth, train your parameters, you want bi star, bu star, stick it into the uh, predictor, you get r hat. The second term in the neighborhood predictor is the actual neighborhood information. Again, we use the cosine coefficient as the metric. Then for each movie i, we define a neighborhood of a certain size. And then, based on that, we say all those movies J in that neighborhood set uh, will be uh, weighed, weighted with a certain weight, for example, the DIJ themselves, and then normalized. This is the total influence in the prediction of UI.